Okay, I bought this yesterday. It's a Maytag dryer, and the, the complaint was that, well, I didn't know this. I plugged it in, and I didn't see anything wrong with it, so I started, I let it run, and it ran about 20 minutes, and it shut off. I just left it alone, and about five minutes later, it came, comes back on. That immediately tells me that there's something going on with the motor, usually the thermal cutoff switch in the motor. It's detecting that the motor's getting too hot while it's running and the only thing you can do to fix this machine is to change the motor. So the way we're going to do that is first you uh, get rid of your, your lint filter. And I've already take, disassembled part of this. You want to take two Phillips head screws out of right here. Then we're going to flip the motor, the, the machine, over on its back. Now we want to access the uh, the components in the back, so we're going to. I've taken all the screws out, but there's one screw that uh, keeps this uh, power lug cover on, and there's nine screws, three here and three on each side, that you have to take out. Then you can take this cover off, and we'll set it aside. Now you need to take this shroud off. This is the the uh, lint filter shroud it, it has the hot air goes in here into the tub then out here through a floor right here so i've already taken four screws off right here and we took the two off at the top when we removed the lint filter so now you have access to the blower wheel now when you remove this blower wheel sometimes you may have good luck sometimes you you won't but Remember this is a left hand thread, so you want to tighten to loosen when you get around to that step. So to loosen this wheel, we're gonna move it clockwise. And usually you can put a, a small piece of wood in here and once you secure your, your motor shaft up front and just tap it real hard and it may or may not loosen. If it doesn't, it'll break this wheel and you'll have to replace it too. I have about 50-50 luck on those. Now once you have it back upright, there's two clips. Take a putty knife, stick in here, push the clip down. I've already been through this dryer and I kind of reassembled, half, halfway reassembled it for this demonstration. Now you have two 5 16 screws, one right here and one right here, and you have this uh, door switch connector right here. Once you do that, you can pick up and pull it away from the case. It's got these two things here and they need to be repaired. I'll do that when I reassemble it. We can set that aside. Now what we want to do is reach in here and get this belt out. And I'm going to take the camera off my head and hold it in there so you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully that's focused. So what I do is I reach in here and grab the belt on the bottom and I move it around the motor shaft and it turns loose. Once you have the belt off you can pick up on it and just remove the drum. Take your idler pulley, set it aside. Now what we want to do is remove that blower wheel. And this shaft right here has a flat spot on it. And you can take a 7 16 inch wrench that will fit on that shaft and hold, but it doesn't hold it very well. Let's try something metric about the same size. That might work a little better. And that is an 11. But what I like to do 
because you're going back and forth. If you have somebody to help you, they can hold it for you. But I like to take a pair of vice grips. These large ones are going there. I like to hold that shaft. Now I got my vice grips on the motor shaft and I need to turn this wheel clockwise. So I'm going to put a board right up next to the solid part of it and hopefully I can deal without breaking the fin or something. Ah! It worked. Comes right off. A lot of times that doesn't work for you. You'll have to drive a, a cold chisel down through here and break these and be able to get the shaft and everything out of this small hole here and then you'll have to replace the your uh, blower wheel but like I said I get I have a 50% chance it's usually 50% that I am a success at taking those blower wheels off without breaking them now that we have that we can go back around to the front and remove our motor. Get rid of the device clip. Have to unplug the motor to the wire connector. Now these motors are put in here with, with these clips. You take a screwdriver and you put it down in this kind of a little depression in the slot push down and like that and these these clips will come right off you have a small one in the front and you have a larger one in the back once you do that you should be able to lift, lift the motor right off the cradle and I can tell that motor is very hot that's what what's it's tripping that that thermal uh, protection in it now I should have a used motor around here somewhere. There's one right there. Good used motor. Yeah, I'm gonna blow all the dust off of it. Maybe lube it up a little. So anytime you're uh, working with something that's going to be in a like in a lint or dust or a really dirty environment you always want to use a dry lubricant so this is dry lube with a ptfe i don't know what that is but it's dirt and dust resistant it's great for table saws drills lathes and also dryer sometimes you can use graphite graphite is so messy i don't i don't want to use it at all i don't want to use something with, with a, a, a silicone lube and this is what this is and what I do on these old motors, I just kind of, any moving part area, I spray down with, with this, and it, it dries. Also lube this, this uh, throwout switch, centrifugal switch. And get down like in the bearings. Where the, where the bushings are. And there's a little washer on the end of this. Get my trusty pocket knife out. Move that washer a little bit away from the shaft so I can get behind it. And this stuff, when it, the, the liquid part of it will dry, and it it will uh, be a dry, just a dry silicone lubricant on there. But never use, never use WD-40 or something like that. This is a WD-40 brand of dry lube, and you have to shake it up. 
Now we're going to play, put our new motor in place. And if you remember, these things have these slots and, and all in it. And they'll, they'll fit. This little piece right here will fit in this notch. So your plug is going to be pointed sideways. So you want to put, put your shaft in and then rotate your motor until that piece drops into place. Now, you're going to take your clips and put them back on, and they're, they're a lot easier to take off than they are to put back on. And this back one, what you want to do, you got a slot right here. See that slot? And that slot fits over a piece right here. Same in the back. You fit one side in and you line it up. Sometimes you can push it with your hand to get in, but I never can. You gotta kinda come down on it with a screwdriver and it pops into place. And the front will be the same way. Very good. Now you want to plug your plug back in. And before I close it up, I want to get all the hair and trash off of these rollers. This one's not rolling very well. I'm going to take this apart. Now this little uh, motor strap post has a keeper on it. You can easily get behind it and work that keeper off, but you don't want to lose it. And there it is. And you have these triangle clips you can take a pick and put in behind it and get them to come off. And you can pull the roller off. There's another triangle clip in the back. You don't usually have to take it off. Now somebody greased this with WD-40 or something like that because you can it's all nasty and sticky. So what we want to do is Clean all the hair off of it. You need debris. And then we're going to clean that up and we'll lube it with some dry lube. Just take a sharp rag and wipe that down real well. Get the sticky off of it. You know, I don't think this is a tag roller. Looks like a Samsung roller. That's what came with this machine, though. So I don't know if they changed the rollers on it or not. better. Put our front clip on. Then we want to put our post on and you want a push clip on. You can put, push it on and then take a socket or something and push it all the way down. Puts it into place. Don't forget to put your cabinet screw back on. Hold down. Alright, we want to do the same with this one. Shiny. 
Put a little lube on it. Runs well. My triangle clip, put it back on. Alright, before I start putting this back together, look at there. I got some of my money back. Okay, 75 cents. I paid $15 for it, so $14.25. Oh, and there's a dime. Fourteen fifteen. Good deal. All right, let me put these tools away. Before I reassemble this, I'm going to blow all this out, clean it all up, and make sure I don't have any dirt in it. There, it looks brand new. Alright. I'm gonna have this. The way this works, it's got this this little angle on it and these little feet. And you put it in this little angle. You want the, you want the slot that's in line with your motor pulley. And it's gonna be going like just like that. And you'll take your tub. You put your tub in and sit it on top of the rollers. Just like that, it'll hang. I'll take my camera off my head. And I'm going to put it right here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to take my belt and I'll spread it through the yoke. Lift up on the outer pulley and feed it over the motor pulley. Yeah, I, need to, I need to fix these. They're broken off. I have another clip right here. Let me see if I have those. There's one. Oh, there's a bunch of them. There's another one. Alright, these clips have been broken. It's supposed to have have two of these on it and it's only got one. So this one's gonna come out. Yeah. And then they're like that. And that just clipped on. And it clipped on. And that one's clipped on. Ready to put our front on. Okay, to hang this, you just put these little square holes down here and fit it on top of that clip. Need it on that side. Put that one on that side, then you lift the drum up, slide it into place. Reattach your door switch. And get your five sixteenths. Screw get your five sixteenths screws and clip this in the right spot. Now we can close the top down. Yeah, I'm gonna put my blower back on. 
Well, the ideal way to have done this was put my vice grips back on. But I didn't think about it. But this floor runs in that one direction and the jolt of starting up usually tightens it enough. So this is left hand thread so we'll go counterclockwise to tighten. Yeah, see it, it jolted on that. And I can reach in here and hold I can hold that tension on that belt. Yeah, that's not working the best. It's slipping, but not, not, not that much. I think that's going to be okay. Now, make sure this is all clean. Feed this back through there. Watch these. Be careful with the wires. Now you want to make sure you got good seals. Here's one. That's the end piece sticking out. This one had good seals on it. And we can. Now we can fasten this down with four quarter inch screws. And that blower in there, you can only get it hand tight and that's usually sufficient. Before I put that back on, I'm going to test it. I'm going to clean this later. You just want to run your dryer with that, that uh, filter in there because it, with it out, it will suck air through here and not through the tub and your element will get too hot. So let's turn it on about, I'll put it on 60, close to 60 as I can, make sure the timer's working. Push it. Now before, when it got hot, the motor would kick out. And the one thing I want to do before I scrap that motor is to uh, salvage this motor switch. The rest of it can go to the junkyard. This motor switch is an asset that you can use on other projects. Okay, now 30 minutes later, you can see the timer has moved down to 30. Oh, we still got very hot air coming out. That's that's pretty good. I'll take this moment to ask you to. So like the video and subscribe to my channel if you can and uh, this is Chip out.